I'm back, <laughs> but not with a redesign this time. Cause let's all be honest here, Smiling Friends has like the best designs. They're simple and like so weird and ugly, it's cute. Except for Gleb, he's hella cute. But yeah, I just wanna talk about Smiling Friends as it's probably the best thing I've watched in a long time. The show is created by Zach Hadel and Michael Cusack. Both creators have super rich histories in animation and were a big part of YouTube's early days. Zach, who was super active on Newgrounds and created so many hilarious videos such as Hellbenders and Arrow to the Knee. He and a few other animators around that time were pretty much ground zero for animation on YouTube. After that, he kind of spent most of his time doing slash running podcasts. He co-hosted Sleepy Cast with other Newgrounds animators, and then he was in a few charity streams with Alec Hirsch of Gravity Falls fame and Justin Roiland, co-creator of Rick and Morty. He did work for a bit on uh, SpongeBob, Tig and Seek, and the Poloni show, but he's mostly worked on web projects such as Hell of a Boss, Ed's World, Cyanide and Happiness, and Monkey Wrench, and so much more. So he has a pretty good roster and background along with having an amazing range in voice acting. Like, look at all the characters he plays in Smiling Friends insane. And his co-creator, Michael, is also hella impressive as well. Like, he plays just as many characters as Zack and also has a rich animation history. Having created Lucas the Magnificent during the Newgrounds era, which is how he and Zack became friends. He then went on to create the Bush World Adventures, the Rick and Morty April Fools episode, which led him into making YOLO Crystal Fantasy, and then finally, Smiling Friends, which I just have to say, Smiling Friends is such a breath of fresh air. Like, yeah, it has that feeling of early 2000s YouTube, and even some of the dialogue is references to Michael and Zach's gameplays and podcasts, but it's still really refreshing to see an adult show be this wacky and zany. The show's premise is so simple, having it be about a charity group focused on making people smile, which gives it a lot of room to allow a lot of random things to happen, you know? Uh, but it dropped around 2022 and has just skyrocketed in popularity. Season two just finished and man, was it good. I was honestly kind of worried because I wasn't sure how they were gonna top season one considering how many references they used, but they did. I genuinely enjoyed a lot of the season minus the president episode, but that's okay. I still enjoyed some of it. Michael and Zach have a style of humor that my nostalgic brain can't help but love. I mean, I grew up with a lot of their videos. The chaotic, fast-paced comedy just did it for me and still does kinda. I mean, I'm not 13 anymore, so my humor is a little broken, but I think Michael and Zach's humor has grown up a bit as well. Like, it's still adult and chaotic. You can tell there's more thought put into it and not just crazy for crazy's sake. Like, the characters, for example, we have Pim, played by Michael, who is this super happy optimistic who genuinely loves his job, life, and helping people, but is constantly shown the darker things to life and thrown into situations that always seem to backfire on him. Like, falling for a client's ex-girlfriend because she He's really pretty. Being hunted down by a tree demon after going across the old bridge his boss told him not to. Bringing a snowman to life only to accidentally tell him about death and almost getting ripped in half when he was trying to help his boss because he knew the country's language. And it's like, I can't help but seriously enjoy that. Like, I do like a happy character, don't get me wrong, but sometimes a character constantly being happy can get to be too much, you know? It's like, I need a small dose of reality to feel sane. So like when these things happen to Pim, I kind of secretly enjoy it. I guess not secretly anymore, but it's like, I, I don't know. There's something in me that enjoys seeing a happy character learn like a dark lesson, if that makes any sense. And I guess that's why I like Charlie so much. And this is where Charlie comes in. This sexy beefcake of a man played by Zach is the polar opposite to Pim and is very laid back. And with more of a realistic view on the world with like a smidge of pessimism, He's not afraid to speak his mind and even say no to the wackiness of the world, even though he also has wacky shit going on, like being a homunculus and having an uncle that just does the most unhinged shit and even dying and going to hell and making Satan smile by himself. And I gotta say, his line delivery is absolutely hilarious. He takes like any mundane thing and just runs with it. Like a lot of Pim and Charlie's conversations just sound like everyday conversations with a close friend. Like they still say straight strange shit, but it's like, they're so nonchalant about it. It's so, it's just, it makes it funny that way. 
it almost feels like improv, but like relaxed improv, you know? Almost kind of reminds me of Aaron and Dan in the early years of Game Grumps. Uh, the supporting cast is also interesting. Alan is probably my favorite character. He's this very serious, kind of mysterious, catty guy who talks super pronounced. This homeless man won't leave, so I'm spraying him with dirty brown water. Thank God, finally. What the fuck? <laughs> Season two focuses on him a bit more, and man, I couldn't be happier. He's hilarious. He's kind of like Charlie in where he doesn't care for the wackiness around him, or I guess he just doesn't care about it, as he just wants to do his job, but still does wacky stuff, yet acts like it's normal, which I just love. The other supporting characters are Gleb and Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss from day one has been a wild character in the best way, doing all manner of weird shit. He's also used very sparingly, which I think works really well for a character like him, because I feel if he's too involved, he can become a bit much. And then we have Gleb. He hasn't had much screen time other than in season one, where he auditions to be Mr. Frog. But honestly, he is still pretty funny. A lot of his moments are more background based, but if you pay attention to him, you'll see him doing like the most simple yet funny things. I hope season three will focus on him a bit more. Also, I should say the outside cast is just as much fun as the main cast. Like the world they live in is so chaotic and kind of horrifying. Like it kind of feels like an adult version of Gumball. They even share a bit of the same art style or I guess art ideas as Smiling Friends uses a lot of different media in their show like stop motion, rotoscoping, even live action. They even had Holo P. I'm probably butchering that, come in and make the 3D model in motion capture for Gwembly, a character designed to look like old Sega games. They also had another YouTuber, Joel, come in to rotoscope because he has a very unique rotoscoping style. Uh, they also change a lot of their animation style as well, like this MSG painting looking world and even the art style from the Lord of the Rings animated version. It's all super unique and so cool to see. I genuinely enjoy it as it feels like a love letter to animation, but also internet animation as most of this stuff is from super obscure internet culture which just adds to its charm. Uh, I do want to talk about the designs because that's kind of my whole thing and I just have to say I love the designs. They're simple yet have a small level of detail that really makes them stand out. Pim for example on first look he just looks like a simple pink blob guy but you'll notice he has one eye bigger than the other and his pupils are drawn super scratchy. His outfit while simple still has some detail to it. His shirt collar and buttons. I've noticed a lot of animators lately kind of avoid buttons. Uh, he even has a belt that goes through his belt loops <laughs> and his one exposed nerve. Like they didn't have to give him that, but they did just for the sake of a one-time joke. Charlie is also a super fun design. He's still simple, but again, has small details. His three hairs sticking out, his shirt peeking out of his hoodie. And what I really like about Charlie is his shape. Like I just love crazy shape designs and Smiling Friends just hits that box for me because nearly every character is shaped like super weird, but it looks so good, you know what I mean? I like that his nose is like basically so big it fuses to his head, and he has like this hunched over posture, and the fact both his eyes are on one side of his face, ugh, so good. And I know I talk about anatomy a lot, and like it needs to be correct and all that stuff, but like there can be moments where you can do something unique and different and still have you not and still have the anatomy feel real like looking at charlie his anatomy looks so real to me like it makes sense for some reason because he's made so well oh so good and then alan is just a sexy red tall man and that's all i have to say because i feel like i'm gonna say so much that i don't want to say <laughs> um so yeah, uh, and then Gleb, although sharing some similarities with Alan design-wise, aka not wearing an outfit and being primarily more of a shape than anything else, but him being so short and only wearing a wizard hat really makes him interesting. And what's so funny is how they all look like they're from completely different universes, yet somehow fit together so well, except Mr. Boss, which which weirdly makes sense. He's the boss and the most left out of the group and the more wacky of the group, which makes his design all that more funny as he's just a human with a really big head, which honestly, it works for him. You know, like it works. It works in so many weird ways and it's so hard to explain because like my design mind knows what's unique about all of this. 
but I don't know how to express it because I've been doing this for years. <laughs> but like, I genuinely have no beef with this show, which is kind of a first. Usually I find something I feel could be worked on, but just like Gumball, I can't. I seriously hope it gets all the love it deserves and more. I know it's not a super groundbreaking adult show as it's not super focused on story or anything specific as it's more of a feel good show because I mean that's their job to make people smile. Every episode always ends with someone smiling which is honestly so needed right now in adult animation. Don't get me wrong, I love dark and more adult topics, but it's kind of rare to get an adult show that just wants to make you laugh in a genuinely funny way and doesn't patronize its audience or just throw in swears cause haha that cartoon character said the F word. Like the conversations feel real and the jokes are actually funny and unique. Like, ugh, I can't praise this show enough. So let me just talk about my Smiling Friends OC or we'll be here all day. So I finally sat down and made a Smiling Friends OC. I'm not super good at doing super simplistic art and I didn't want to draw an OC that looked too similar to any of the cast. Plus with their world being so full of random things and characters, I kind of decided to make my own creature person, which ended up being worms on a string people. Not super creative, but eh. I drew myself and my partner as I asked if he wanted one as well and I got a hell yeah in response. So I made us insanely tall, or at least tall enough to where we could bend over and walk on all fours. Since we have mantis paws, our necks are super long cause again, worm, and the hairstyles were easy as I have pretty fluffy hair so I just made myself more fluffy but my partner has like super straight mullet hair. So I gave him like fluffy bangs and longer fur on the back of his neck to give the illusion of a mullet. It, it's not giving what I thought, but I tried. Uh, I made the eyes similar to Pim's, so one big, one small, and instead of doing like the googly eye style, I kind of used DJ Spitz eye color style but only on one eye, just cause. Uh, as for tails, I actually based the designs uh, on actual worms on a string we have at home. I have a blue one in my car and I've kind of rubbed the tail so much all the fur lays flat. So that's why my tail has no fluff and my partner's worm has like a weird bent at the end of its tail, so yeah he gets a bent tail. Oh, and his worm on a string is also red cause surprise, we're a red and blue couple. <laughs> As for outfits, I kind of just put us in our loungewear. So for me, a Sega game shirt, but this time it's a insane groundbreaking game shirt to fit within universe <laughs> and sport shorts and my yellow socks. While my partner is in his fave shirt, AKA the bisexual shirt, and my, that's right, my oversized cargo pants that I have plans to add patches to and bleach art, but he keeps stealing them and that's about it other than Pim asking about my shirt and my partner losing his mind. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I just really wanted to gush about Smiling Friends and all the fun stuff I love about it. I can't wait for season three. Also, next video will be something. I kind of want, I kind of want to bring back my Hasbun Hotel Becoming Angel series, but eh, we'll see. I don't know. I'd also like to draw Miraculous again, specifically Felix, but then I also want to draw, um, Funtime Chica or like any version of Chica because we've, because we've been getting FNAF news about the movie, about the next movie, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm also gonna start up members and emojis. Finally got an idea on what to make the badges. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you want to support me, I have a Kofi link in the description as well as what I use to draw. Uh, but yeah, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and me. I hope you all have a super fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha.